Hey everybody, it's Kira and welcome back to my channel. So today I have my March wrap up for you guys. So the theme of this month was reading books in like two days. <laughs> I did that with quite a few of the books that I read in this past month. Um, I don't really know why, I just got into a reading groove and just spent like full days basically like trying to just read and um, I read a lot of really amazing books this month so I'm excited to share them with you. So first up we have The Anticipated Aurora's End by Amy Coffin and Jay Kristoff. I teased this in my February wrap up because I technically finished this the beginning of March even though I definitely started it in the end of February aka I read it February 28th and March 1st. <laughs> so um, this is the third book in the Aurora Cycle trilogy and was so good. It was amazing. So at the end of the second book, so the spoilers for the first two for sure, but at the end of the second book we have like three distinct groups of people. We have Tyler who's with Sadie, we have Aurora and Cal, and then we have Zila, Finn, and Scarlet are all kind of like in their own little groups, right? And then there's like big explosion at the end of the second one and then that ended, right? Huge cliffhanger, crazy. So this third one, we follow those distinct groups in actually three different times, which is super cool. There's a lot of like, there's a time loop, which I was not expecting, but that was so fun to read. I feel like I haven't read a lot of time loop stuff before, so it was really fun to um, be able to read it. Tyler and Sadie's point of view, I think was my favorite. I actually, my least favorite was actually Aurora and Cal's point of view. I didn't mind it as much, but like, I was like, the others are way more exciting. Tyler and Sadie, their relationship was so fascinating and very good and, I loved what happened to them and like where they were in history and like or like where they were and like fig trying to figure out how to like make things happen and then Finn and Scarlet and Zila and there's another character that they meet and it's so good I oh my gosh I love love them I love the banter as always the banter in here is just top-notch it's so good and I feel like it did a really good job explaining like how the things from the first two books could have happened because like we get a lot in the first two books of like stuff is lining up exactly how it should but it almost seems like too good to be true kind of a thing or like how do the um the leaders of the Aurora Academy like how do they know that they needed these things and like that all gets explained in this book and it was really well done. I was sobbing at the end there. Oh my gosh. I like I said I read this in like two days and I just like was crying on and off throughout the last like 100 pages of it because of like everything that happens. Oh my gosh. It was really 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 well done and I love this series so much and definitely will reread it in the future. It's oh, it's just so good. So then after that, I read All My Rage by Saba Tahir, another book that I read in, I think, three days maybe? Something very, like, very short amount of time. So this is Saba Tahir's first contemporary. So I was only slightly nervous because I love her fantasy books so much, and um, I was like, and I'm not, like, contemporary is very hit or miss for me, so I was like, I don't know, but it's Saba's writing, so I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna love it, but I don't really know, but yeah, I, I just loved it this book. It was very different than Ember, but also very similar in a lot of ways. She mentions Elias at least twice in the book, which is really funny, but like in a specific way that like, if you know, you know kind of thing, which I thought was so funny to me to um, like see that little, little callback, little, little Easter egg there. So we follow our two main characters, Sal and Noor. So Sal's parents own a motel in this small town. They live in like a small town in California and um, his parents own a hotel but his dad is kind of uh, drunk and like doesn't do much and his mom has failing health issues so he's just kind of struggling to make it through high school and then Noor lives with her uncle yeah 
Nora lives with her uncle. Her whole family is, the rest of her family is dead actually. So she is originally from Pakistan and her uncle um, rescued her and brought her to America. And then Sal's parents are originally from Pakistan, but he was born in America. So they both have that shared um, Pakistani history, but like in different ways. And they both come at it from very different points of view as well, based on like their families and stuff. And they are really good friends, but when the book opens, are, we actually find them in the middle of, like, a separation. At, they're in the middle of, like, a big fight. And it's very interesting, like, seeing, like, being dropped in the middle of a relationship that's, like, exploded a little bit. And seeing that, like, separation, but that longing for, like, what used to be kind of a thing. So, and then you also follow a little bit of Sal's mother, Mizbah, and her growing up in Pakistan and, like, what led her to, um, the point of, like, where Sal's story starts. So that was really cool. You get, like, little sprinklings of her story mixed in. But it's just about Sal and Noor and, um, there's a thing that happens and how they deal with it and it's so good. I just love Sabatahir's writing style. She just writes the most beautiful things and um, her her poetic language is just it really draws you in and makes you feel for these characters this was another one where I was like crying so hard at the end of the book I oh my gosh I was sobbing it was so good it was just really well written and an amazing contemporary and I yeah just loved it I really want to go back and um, annotate it and there also, um, Noor really loves music, and so throughout the book, um, she references quite a lot of songs, but I didn't, like, listen through them, but I should, so I think when I reread it, I'm gonna, um, like, stop every time she references a song and, like, listen to the song, because it has to do with, like, that's how she, or, like, sometimes, like, expresses her emotions, and, like, that's how she, um, like, processes things, is, like, through music, and so I really want to go back through and listen to all the songs that she references because I feel like it gives the story like an even deeper um it gives even more depth to the story but yeah read all my rage it's so good <laughs> after that I finally read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes I'd been on the holds list for this at my library for like two months or something one of my friends Natalie um read it and really loved the first two and so I was like well I guess I will try it I knew like hardly anything about this book going into it I remembered it being all over book talk um a while back and so I was like I don't really know anything else about this but okay this follows the story of Avery who lives with her stepsister and she does not have a lot of money and is um just trying to make it through high school when news of a billionaire, Tob Tobias Hawthorne, dies, and it turns out that he has left the majority of his fortune to her, to Avery, this unknown random girl, this, she does not know Tobias at all. So she gets flown to Hawthorne House, and basically the deal is she can access the majority of her inheritance of this house and um, all its stuff, if she's able to live in the house for the next year. She's unable to, like, take up residence somewhere else. She can, like, leave the house, obviously, but she can't live anywhere else. So yes, she has to live in this house for a year. Obviously, as there are four grandsons from Tobias Hawthorne, uh, the family does not really like her. They're like, who the heck is this random girl who suddenly has all of our inheritance? So, Thus begins, there's lots of like puzzles and mysteries and oh my gosh, it's so good. I read this one in like two days. Again, not kidding. Read it so fast. It was so well done. So we have um, the four sons, I can't remember the oldest one's name, but he's just kind of like, and eh, whatever, like I don't really care. But then we have Jameis, nope, we have Grayson, who is second oldest, and he is, and then it's Grayson, Jameson, and Xander, I believe. And um, all three of them are kind of twisted into these mysteries and trying to figure out why Tobias left all of this stuff to Avery. And um, there's a lot of like could be romance moments throughout it with her and um, some of the boys. And of course, because she suddenly is thrust into the spotlight here, there's a target on her back because if she dies, like, the inheritance can go to other people. And so there's people who are after her as 
well. And so there's a lot of like action in that part. Um, I feel like I'm not describing it very well, but it's really, really cool. I don't read like mysteries that often, so it was really different for me, but I, it was just so fast paced, like stuff just kept happening, it kept happening, it kept happening. I was like, what is going on? And of course we're trying to figure out like why the heck is Avery like a part of this? Like what did she do? Or how did she happen to know to like Tobias Hawthorne? Like why is she connected to this family that she shouldn't be connected to, that she doesn't know how she's connected to either? And then like the boys all have like mysterious past and there's like a random girl who like we're trying to figure out like what's going on and yeah it's oh my gosh so amazing. I'm on the holds list. I'm number one on the holds list for the second one so I'm hoping that I'll get it in this next month and be able to read it because it ends again cliffhanger and um there's a thing that gets revealed right at the end of the book that I hadn't seen coming whatsoever. I was hoping that this character would like pop back up but in a different way but then there's a reveal and this person is not who you think they are and you're like wait what and I'm very very excited to find out what happens in the second one and the third one comes out in like August I believe so yeah I'm, it was very well well worth the read and well worth the hype after that I read Well Met by Jen DeLuca this is a romance book that was recommended to me by one of my co-workers at the library actually so our main character's name is Emily and she is coming to this small town in Maryland to help out her sister and her niece after her sister gets in a car accident and is kind of bedridden um, and can't like walk very well. She, uh, she is healing but she like needs somebody there to help her. So her niece's name is Caitlin and she's very excited to help with the renaissance fair that always happens in the summer in this small town. Because her sister can't help and Emily wants to be helpful, she signs up to help with this renaissance fair along with Caitlin to kind of like help her niece and just for something to do during the summer. And there's a teacher there named Simon who is our main love interest. And at first they really dislike each other because he's like, he's one of the organizers of the renaissance fair and it's very important to him and he wants things done a certain way and Emily is this newcomer who's like I, why are we doing it this way and here's some things could be like different and all these things and so they kind of butt heads at the beginning but then when they get to the renaissance fair he turns into this like pirate character and suddenly sparks fly in a very different way um, and she, he becomes kind of like a whole new person and so she finds herself attracted to him and then like they just go through the renaissance fair and Emily's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life and should she stay she wasn't planning on staying in the small town but like it's kind of growing on her so should she stay it's very cute and fun it's romance like not a whole lot of substance, but there was one part that just really annoyed me. Emily's not always the brightest character. She doesn't quite pick up on everything. So near the end of the book, she's trying to figure out if she wants to leave or not. And she starts working at this bookstore um, because one of the um, other people in the Renaissance Fair owns a bookstore. And so Emily finds it one day and then like starts working for her. And so the other lady is like teaching Emily how to like run the bookstore. But Emily thinks because they've talked about hiring a replacement, like hiring like high school student to help out, Emily thinks that she's like teaching her how to run the bookstore so that she can then teach the high schooler like the stuff that you need to know. But it's like, girl, she's teaching you how to run the bookstore so that she can retire and you can take over the bookstore so you can stay. Like, I don't know, it was just like the way that it was written. To me, it was like super obvious that that's what was happening, but Emily was just like, oh man, she feeling so like sad about this and I don't want to go and all this stuff. I don't know. It was okay. Like, it wasn't my favorite book of all time, but it was a cute romance, so I enjoyed it. And then lastly, we have The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. I think I have the third one right here. I'm currently reading the second one. So, um, this is a book my, one of my online friends, Shelly, loves this series and I was like well okay now I have to read it because you love the series so much. Um, so it's kind of hard to explain but basically our main character Neil is a high school student who is kind of on the run and he right now is at a small town. Um, we don't know why he's quite on the run but he plays this fictional sport called Exe and he gets recruited by one of the worst teams in the like Exe league but 
they're the most well-known team because they are a bunch of like people who come from like broken homes and who have like a lot of issues and stuff and so the coach like picks Neil the coach and there's a character named Kevin who like comes to recruit Neil and Neil has some sort of past with Kevin but he's not sure if Kevin recognizes him or not from this past. So he decides to go and play for this college team and so the first book follows up through like their summer practices through their very first game of the season. And the characters, it's just about like Neil and his past and these other characters' troubled past and Neil trying to figure out what the heck is going on and also me trying to figure out what the heck is going on with these characters. The characters are very intense, all of them, because they come from like terrible backgrounds, all of them have their own issues and like are just very intense people in general. So the relationships between each of the characters is like weird and interesting, like trying to figure out like how are they connected and like why is this person acting this way and it's just a lot. There's a guy named Andrew who um, like has to stay on medication because of an agreement in the past. I think he has to stay on it for like three years or something. We don't really know why yet and yeah it's them like trying to play this sport but like it's more about the characters and their relationships and this um, like these shady backgrounds that all of these people have. It's just interesting like I don't know how to explain it and I don't know how I feel about it either like it was it was hard to keep everybody straight especially when they added in like for at the beginning of the book or like in the middle of the book you have just I think there's like five of them or something but then like the other half of the team comes to join them for the summer practices so then like you added more characters so then it was hard like keeping everybody straight and like who is involved with who and who doesn't like who and all this stuff. So I'm in, I'm a little bit into the second book right now and it's, I don't know, it's very fascinating. I was talking to Shelly about this actually and she said it's one of those books that like actually is better on the reread because once you like know that, which I think is just the same is true of like The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, like it's confusing on the first read through but like when you reread it you're like oh okay I can kind of see like where these pieces go kind of a thing. But I don't know, it's very interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I'm definitely gonna finish them. So I'm excited to keep reading and find out like more of this, these backgrounds and like what's going on with these characters and stuff. So that's it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of March. Comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of them and what your thoughts were on them. I'd love to chat in the comments below. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you wanna follow me on social media, all my links will be in the description as always. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.